Morning, everybody. There we go. <laughs> Took a minute. Perfect. How's everyone doing tonight? Good to see everyone. Good to hear from everyone. Get started. Things coming online. So, ready to jump in. I have, uh, there's plenty of things I can talk about. It should be a, yeah, time. What? While the screen is loading, I'm going to be right back because I might book or look at, talk about. So, Loading screen, and me wandering off screen. One moment. There we go. That is a shocking close-up of Samara that I walked back into. But uh, just in case I wanted to talk about any of that stuff in particular, I figured it'd be good to have the books on me, and I had them in the other room. So, not a problem. Take a long run anyway. So, if we recall, last thing we did uh, was our last loyalty mission so far. We were. Uh, Uh -oh. scouting vessels that rapidly retreated. The council has pledged a full investigation. Need companions. So, but want something more than a one night of the So we're on our way to uh doing some <clears throat> doing some side quests and things. I want to really quickly go and get um and Jacob. Yes. Um also, let me know if the volume is too high or too low. I changed it around a little bit while I was recording some other things. So, uh, if you can't hear the game or you can't hear me, please let me know and I will do some fixing on Otherwise, switch out our... Uh, let's see how... I don't know. Um, red or black will decide. Miranda. Oh, wait. This is alternate look. Yep. Oh, this is his alternate look. Okay, that's boring. All right, fair enough. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, no. Uh, let's go there. Lewis. Oh, hey. Ooh, lasts. A few critical seconds longer, it lasts a whole extra minute. Oh my god. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Anyway, as I said, I uh, as I kind of indicated, I have a uh, um, new one, a uh, new video in my um, in my series on Plato's Republic. It just came out yesterday. Yeah, I believe, if I'm counting my days correctly. Um, you told me about Jacob, didn't you? Uh, so, hopefully you guys had a chance to see that. I highly recommend checking that out. That is kind of uh, one of the core arguments that form kind of the backbone of the Republic, uh, that form that a lot of the arguments throughout sort of uh, are either for or against Glaucon's position as there. Uh, and it's or less forms the structure of the argument between Glaucon and Socrates throughout books 2 through 10. So, 
Definitely wa worth checking out. I highly recommend that video, and uh, and I also highly recommend reading along if you can find a copy of it. And if you, of course, if you can't, feel free to contact me directly. I'm happy to help you find a copy of it. Jacob Taylor, I certainly didn't expect to see you again. I'm sure you didn't. No, please. So many years have passed since Tortuga. Lots of water under the bridge. I take it you've met each other before? Jacob and I worked a mission with Ish a few years back. He helped us with some information. You sent me into a nest of Turian thugs in a Batarian ambush. Hey uh -oh. now, my job was to get you inside. Anything more would have cost you extra. Is this gonna be a problem? If we don't walk away, I promise he'll give you a reason to shoot him. Let's do it anyway. It sounded like you were watching us, Ish. <coughs> you need something? Well, if you'd be so kind, I hoped you might consider a proposition. I need skilled, trustworthy people to take care of a little business for me. Nothing illegal, of course, but it's paying work. What kind of business do you do? Important business. So important that, with your help, we can change Omega. What do you mean, we can change Omega? Well, I didn't want to say anything, but certain people here have business deals with people throughout the galaxy. If we were to have information involving those deals, we could make some ripples around here. That's all I'll say. I'm listening. I'm in the information business, specifically the buying and selling of privileged material. It's nothing illicit. I just need someone to pick up packages in certain locations and bring them to me here. What's your angle? No angle. I'm a simple businessman. What do you say? All right. I can do that. Sure. My contacts use specific drop points. I need you to look outside Merib's shop on the Citadel and inside Eternity on Ilium. Look around for anything that might hold a data package and bring those packages to me. Good to see you alive, Jacob. Yes, Kylie, even more pleakly ish pleakly. Previous pleakly ish pleakly. -ish. <clears throat> yeah, Salarians are basically. Of course, that I, I'm, I'm rather familiar with him. To think about him, given that I have watched, I've watched Lilo and Stitch, um, dozens of times in the last few weeks. It is, uh, it's more or less Serge's new favorite. So. Kylie says, Stitch is my spirit animal. That's troubling. That is deeply troubling. Uh, a uh, a hyper-intelligent, super-strong monster designed for nothing but destruction who eventually finds Commander, the love of a family. Okay. Um, I can respect the, and fear that. <laughs> Time to feed the fish, obviously. Let's see what we got. Oh, hey, here we go. Or not Darg. This is the guy. This is that scout that we rescued. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the um, <clears throat> the alternate version of that encounter that I put in the comment. The, uh, the description of the last stream, the last Mass Effect stream of uh, if you encounter him with uh, with Tally and you you say he's whining worse than a, a, um, a quarian with a tummy ache. And she's like, I'm right here. Um, I almost wish I'd brought her just for that, but uh, I'm, I'm actually, I was disappointed not to hear any lines, any relevant lines from uh, Brunt on that mission. So maybe I should have brought Tally. Uh, or not dark, dear human. Clan leader told me how to get in touch with you. I don't remember much of what happened, but the chief scout said you pulled my quad out of the fire when I got caught and poisoned over at the Weirlock camp. Thanks. Next time I have a chance to kill a human, I won't. Unless I go into a blood rage or something. I got to the female camp after I recovered, and it was pretty good. I was actually thinking of joining the blood pack before this happened. I think I'm going to stay here instead. Or not Darg, second, uh, scout, second class. Love this guy. Oh, I see. So Kylie says, the uh, I mean the drama queen stitches compared to... I, okay, I get that. I, okay, fair enough. That's, uh, that's rather different than... Uh, than that, that is one particular aspect of... Stitch is very complex and multivalent character. And I'm... That sounded sarcastic, but I actually do mean... Um, Alright, so let's go check on our research and check on our Pleakly. I mean... Solos. Gordon Solos. 
Uh, ooh, yes, indeed. Else new? Nope, nope, okay. Nope. Alright, so let's check in on more. Still hard to believe Malin betrayed me. Betrayed my work. Disgusted by his actions. Proud of his nerve, though. Always thought he lacked backbone. Hope he finds something new. Better goal, better purpose. Fewer torture tests. You're really at peace with what happened? Yes, of course. Can't change what happened. Life continues. Back to mission, back to work. Become like Malin otherwise. Solarian emotional processing faster than other species. Has to be. Short-lived culture can't spend time reminiscing. So you really don't like feel that. bad at all about what happened on Tachanka? Yes, correct. Now at least. Greatly distressed at the time. Stages of grief, loss, anger, rationalization. Dealt with it. Most issues settled on Tachanka, some on shuttle back to Normandy. Malin didn't seem like he processed his emotional response. He was obsessed with the genophage. True. Didn't mean to imply that Salarians were healthier emotionally, can still make wrong choices, bad decisions from grief, anger, guilt. Malin couldn't accept feelings. Made decision, executed. Probably before I left for Omega. Wish I'd seen it. Salarians still feel, just resolve it quickly. Explains lack of marriage, can't sustain courtship emotions. Or perhaps based on reproduction. Unsure. Um, I mean, both, probably. Um, likely both, because, you know, those two things are pretty related, pretty closely related. <clears throat> uh, but this is really cool. I like this about Solarians. They, that I like this about Mass Effect in general, that the, the alien species are treated as, as actually unique and different. They think differently, but not in that sort of, uh, not in that sort of just some of them are, just have weird pseudo-rationality kind of way that you'll sometimes get in science fiction. Uh, they all think in the same way logical manner it's just they deal with things differently they process information differently they may have a different you know sort of mental furniture that sort of thing but um it is i think a really good and probably realistic way of depicting a, a different species of rational animal it's really cool I, I i also i like what they do with especially really starting it really starts in two uh, i like what they do with most of the Alien psychology. See. What about Malin's data on the genophage? His attempts at a cure. What about it? Have it over there somewhere. I'm not dealing with it now. Need to focus on collectors. Not important now, regardless. Appreciate you helping me back on Tachanka. Should get back to work. Wasted enough time already. Lots to do. Talk later. Okay. Yeah, uh, he does process decently quickly, I will say. Like, decently quickly? I mean, unsettlingly quickly for a human. But uh, but I get that I get that. Commander, um, can I help you with something? I mean, I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Sounds good. Stop. Do some downtime. That's so crazy. Something right. The way some people talk, we may as well be dead already. Hard for the crew to relax on this kind of job. No kidding. The next Normandy gets a lounge. They better not need to do this again. It does. Building by the way. everything was a pain in the ass. I can verify that. Yeah. I bet you can. I doubt they'll front the money to stitch me back together if we screw it up. It's a hell of a job, isn't it, Shepard? Being the good guys. Wouldn't be the high road if it was easy. You've got to figure, if all the people hoping we win stood up, the Collectors would have a much bigger fight on their hands. Claws, whatever. I bet we have a lot more friends once we win. Hope we live to see it. I hear that. Anyway, I need to get back to work. Good talking to you. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I like that. Those two, I, I honestly really do like Jacob. He's a cool guy. Uh, he is sort of, I don't know, normie. <laughs> There's not, like, too much specifically that's super interesting about him. Um, but he's also just a normal dude. He's, he's ex-military who just kind of mustered out and went and did his own thing. Um, but he's just a guy on the ship he's not a super assassin like Thane he's not a um I was gonna say psychopath but let's say ex-psychopath like uh, like Karis um he's not a current psychopath like Grunt right he's just a dude he's a guy uh he's I think he's really relatable like that I, I like the 
I like the mix of characters in Mass Effect 2, and I'm really glad that they included the regular guy. It does not stand up to the other ones in terms of, like, interesting character, but but I think that's the point. I think they tried to do the same thing in Andromeda with Liam, uh, if you've played it or seen it, uh, but it didn't work as well. Liam's kind of a weirdo. Um, or at least maybe not a weirdo necessarily, but as a but he's um, extremely high energy compared to Jacob, who's really relaxed. Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk. Very well. I am. I had been recording a message for Kolyat. How are things going with him? It is difficult. All things worth keeping are. I never explained. I suppose the story of my wife's death took you by surprise. I figured you'd explain to me when you were ready. I appreciate your patience. I kept my work clear of our home life. I assumed that would be enough to protect Erika. That memory I mentioned before. Laser dot trembles on the target's skull. The smell of spice on a spring wind. Sunset eyes defiant in scope. That was Erika. That was how I met her. She saw my targeting laser as she walked by and threw herself in the way. I guess she impressed you. She woke me up. Her body trembles, not fear. Indignation. Her mouth moves. How dare you? You and I trained to sacrifice ourselves to save others. How often does a civilian step in the way of a bullet to protect someone they've never met? I thought she was the goddess Harashu. She met my eyes through the scope, and my purpose faltered. So how'd she go from blocking your shot to having your children? I had to meet her. The memory possessed and endowed me. I fell on my knees before her, begged her pardon. She introduced me to the world beyond my work. Eventually, she forgave me. Later, she loved me. Hmm. The woke me up thing is is that's so thematically appropriate for Drell, both with the um, the solipsism of memory thing, falling into these vivid memories. Uh, and then also the other element of this being the the sort of mind body separation, getting snapped back into reality like that. Um, you're dreaming and you suddenly wake up. Kind of, it's meaningful. I mean, when you talked to Kolyat, you said she died. I let myself become complacent. I thought Erika and Kolyat were safe. I stayed away too long. And my enemies came for her. Who came for her? Atarians. A slaver ring that was preying on Hanar out her colonies. I'd killed their leaders. They paid the Shadow Broker to find out who I was. But they were afraid of me. So they went after her. You told Kolyat that you hunted her killers down. Erika woke me up. When she passed, I returned to my battle sleep. My body hunted her killers. Murdered them. I was taught to grant death quickly. Cleanly. To minimize suffering. Them. I let them linger. You were operating on instinct. By your own rules, you can't blame yourself. But I made the choice to hunt them. They're the only lives I've ever taken of my own choice. The only deaths on my own conscience. I haven't spoken about my wife in... I don't think I ever have. I didn't have anyone left to tell it to. You're talking to your son again. That's not. That's huge. Don't lose sight of that by dwelling on should-have-beens. You are correct, of course. Thank you for listening, Siha. I think my translator just glitched. What did you call me? Siha. Someday I'll tell you what it means. Also neat thing to note, uh, the Universal Translator things. Your pieces, apparently, or something like that. Uh, which... Um, there you are. Oh. Liara Tassoni's got quite a reputation. I've done business with her people before. My heart goes out to Miranda and her sister. That's a rough situation. Jacob deserves better than a father like that. I probably would have wanted to shoot him too. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Oh wait, we do have a bar. What's all this about? Let's have some red. But we're having some red. Um,
yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. Some of the design design elements behind Thane, um, he was designed how he was basically specifically to be the uh, the sexy alien. Uh, like that was the whole point of his design. Uh, how do we make a very very strange alien, but still keep it familiar enough to be the sexy alien? Um, I'll let I'll let uh, or let my. Morinth haunted my dreams and waking hours equally. For the first time in 400 years, I am free. I am a ruined vessel of sorrow and regret, but I am free. It is not a feeling I can describe. You did your duty. What about your feelings? One of my daughters is dead. My hopes, my dreams were all bound up in my children. Still, my feelings have always come after my duty. The same is true of you. Was it worth it? It was never a question of worth, but of need. I had to take the action I did, as did she. This was never a story that would have a happy outcome. You said that Morinth was a monster, but she was still your daughter. She was the strongest and smartest. She would not accept the injustice thrust upon her. She fought to the end. I am so proud of her, Shepard. Killed her for being what she was. And I would again. But I also know what it means to leave everything behind and fight. Do you realize that she went on the run at the age of 40? I do not know human years well, but it is very young for Asari. What will you do now that Morinth is gone? Assuming I survive your mission? I am a Justicar. Injustice still exists. And perhaps even other Ardat Yakshi. I thought Ardat Yakshi were extremely rare. Asari have spread to many worlds. There are remote regions with no government oversight. If I travel to those worlds and they do exist, I will find them. So here's the thing, too. Um, <laughs> so they retconned this really significantly in the third game. Uh, in Mass Effect 3... Um, you find out that there is a whole monastery full of Ardat Yakshi, um, which is where her other two daughters are. And so the uh, the Asari republics keep track of these things, and they, you know, they're responsible for sort of offering them the choice that was offered to Morinth, and Morinth refused, right? So it's... Uh, they wanted there to be more... Excuse me. They wanted there to be more Ardat Yakshi, or at least potential Ardat Yakshi, um... To, to sort of increase that as a threat in the third game, we'll talk. About, I can talk about that. But that I don't want to spoil too much uh, as to why that's significant for the story and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it was one of the major, uh, one of the major retcons that happens throughout the series, and um, it the change sort of changes the emphasis and changes the, the uh, importance of, um, or changes sort of the tone of uh, of the sort of the pure blood insult uh, talking about asari being a child of two asari <clears throat> uh in in this game it doesn't seem like that will that will likely result in an art actually it's just a genetic thing that's passed on so with uh from samara and that sort of thing but it's it seems third game with there being more art actually it makes it seem like any pure blood Asari, any children, any child of two Asari, a child, uh, sorry, mother and father, so to speak, um, has a chance of being an Ardat Yakshi, regardless of genetics. So that sort of puts the, the the sort of distaste Asari have for pure bloods in a new light that makes it that sort of gives it more sense rather than it being uh, just a simple prejudice. It's something like I said. It's something more like. Um, it's something more like incest, as I've, as I've kind of brought up before, but incest that can result in, uh, in, you know, a genetic predisposition to to murder by snoo snoo, so to speak. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it kind of recontextualizes a lot of what goes on in this game and in one, um, because, you know, remembering that even our friend Liara is a pureblood, right? Her father was. Sorry. 
who we will talk to at some point, as it so happens. But regardless, um, yeah, it is. Uh, it's it, it really does recontextualize a lot of the a lot of the insults having to do with that, uh, and and it sort of it gives more insight into the sort of exogamous nature of the, the sorry wanting to sort of spread out and uh, and um, gain new. Uh, I can't say genetic information, but more or less genetic information from these other, other sapient regions, that sort of thing. There's no way to correct the condition, Morantad? We are an advanced species, but we don't have magic. When the trait manifests at maturity, it is too late for mitigation. It only occurs in purebloods like myself. Perhaps that is the root of the stigma regarding Asari-exclusive pairings. I don't know. Um, okay, yeah, and, and like I said, the third game makes it uh, sort of brings up the implication that that is the root of stigma. Pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, that, I, I also am a little bit skeptical about that as well. Uh, this is a universe where genetic engineering, like adult gene therapy, is commonplace. Uh, it's used for soldiers to help them cope with with like low gravity bone density loss and things like that. So I would surprised that the Asari, the most advanced species in the galaxy at this time, most advanced organic species in the galaxy at this time, um, is, uh, are, that they're incapable of, of, uh, curing a genetic disorder that they have had for their entire history. But maybe again, it could be that it is, um, it's a particular type of thing that is either curable or it's so rare that there hasn't been into it. And that's also a possibility. If there are plenty of diseases that we don't cure, we probably could, but we wouldn't want to use resources doing so when those diseases could that could perfectly. Morinth claimed that her condition was the future of the Asari race. Morinth would say anything that served her cause. Ardat Yakshi are sterile, Shepard. That wouldn't be a particularly viable future for my people. You don't want huh. to settle down? I did. I returned to my homeworld and tried to start a family. I will fight and struggle all my life. That is my fate. When I die, it will not be in bed. I am at peace with that. I like that. You still control the direction of your life. I have chosen this path. I truly am at peace, due in no small part to you. Nice. It's another case of... Uh, of accepting one's oncoming death even still a ways away. Let's see, anything Commander, good, Miranda? What can I do for you? Do you have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I've been meaning to speak with you, in fact. I wanted to apologize. I didn't fully believe you'd be up to the task, and it seems I was wrong. Frankly, based on what I've seen, I wish Cerberus had recruited you earlier. Mm, no, I'd have probably shot you if you hadn't been the ones to put me back together. Just gonna be honest, based on, you know, our experience with Cerberus in the first game. You know, the crazy people who, are, who remember murdered Admiral Kahoku. I trust you, but I don't trust Cerberus. Your experiments cross the line. All the time, yes. But I recall a Spectre who crossed a few lines while hunting down Sarah oh, and the Geth. And we'd be lucky to that's have That's cruel. You. Too many join us nice. simple xenophobia. We need more people here for the right reasons. But with Cerberus trying to prove by experimenting on children like Jack? A mistake, no question. Not mine. And one that was corrected once we discovered the extent of the experiments being performed. I saw your bases years ago. You were using Rachni, Thorian Creepers, even Husks to make your own army. The husks were already dead, the Thorian creatures were mindless, and the Rachni were abandoned once we understood their intelligence. We weren't breeding an army, we were breeding expendable shock troops for high-risk scenarios. How many soldiers died in Saren's attack on Eden Prime? How many would have lived if we'd had just a dozen Rachni soldiers on our side? Hmm. I don't know if that would have helped. As I understand it, the Rachni were defeated. It's, I think one could have done 
perfect job against them, and probably Geth as well. Uh, Geth, I don't know in particular. But it's an ends justifying the means kind of mentality that Cerberus is notorious for. And that, again, is... is Let's say morally problematic and and leave it understated, Jim. With your intelligence, you could have landed any job you wanted. Why choose this? Because I still envy the time Morden spent with the special tasks group, working with people as smart as he was. Cerberus never tells me that something is impossible. They give me my resources and say do it. And they've given you even more. A new life, a new ship, the elusive man's personal attention. The best thing he did was to put you on my squad. You'd have done fine without me. I don't know what the best, I may but not have believed it before, but... Probably the Norman. I don't have what you do. That fire that makes someone willing to follow you into hell itself. My father got me the best genes money could buy. Guess it wasn't enough. You always bring up your genetic tailoring. It really bothers you, doesn't it? This is what I am, Shepard. I can't hide it. The intelligence, the looks, even the biotics. He paid for all of that. Every one of your accomplishments is due to your skill. The only things I can take credit for are my mistakes. Mm. Mm, no. You're not coasting on good genes, Miranda. Your ability and your dedication speak for themselves. Thank you, Commander. I appreciate that. I should get back to work, but thank you for coming by. I will say, um, Miranda has grown on me over the years and the times I've played this game. Um, her like, weird superiority complex it got grating, um, but I can kind of see where she's where she's coming from. Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Sure, just killing time anyway. Optimizing weapons charges, planning attack vectors, you know, relax. I'm still trying to figure out how to prepare for this mission. Humans oh, we already don't stress list. the way Turians do. Uh, Shepard, no, stop it. Thanks for the talk, Garrus. I'll let's, see you later. Let's not do this. Sure thing. Hey, Shepard. see I guess to talk about how may oh. I help you commander I'll see you later doctor commander yeah kindly laugh uh, yeah huh. listen there is a very very significant portion of aspect fandom who swears by uh romance between a uh, shepherd and Garrus and you know if we are to indic if we are to take any indication for Shepard's way of sitting, I guess she's one of them. Shepard, you're with Caden. Eyes on the prize. Bird not grunt. I like it. I have a clan. That makes me. It makes me want to fight, not just able to. At Uvink, I wanted to disembowel him. To tear out his spine like a trophy. Well, you did shoot him. So that's good. Hey, WizKid. Who's Linda? Also, don't bone bug bug best friend. <laughs> bug. Bug best friend. Yeah, but no, he's a, they're birds. They're birds with mandibles. I guess that's kind of bugs. So fair enough. All right, fine. Um, but yeah, no doubt, no, man. I, I, I still, I still maintain that the comrades in arms kind of relationship is the best way that, uh, Shepard and, uh, Shepard and Garrett's interact. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he is more like a bird. More like a, a bird, or maybe, maybe like a raptor kind of thing. Still, birdish. Bird-like. With the fringe. We started this because you were losing control. Now you sound more violent than ever. Rex said I was normal. Just had this built-up stuff because of being grown in the tank. Now that I know it's not an outside thing, and I have a place as a Krogan, I like it. Our enemies are in trouble, Shepard, and we better not run out of targets. There's ah. no danger of that. They're practically lining up. Everyone gets a turn. Ha! 
wouldn't want it any other way. It's good. I I still I still love. Did you hear that we are sharing our deck with a Krogan? Well, ain't that peachy? Yes. Um, see what's up, Tally. Anything new? Shepard, what can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? I really need to clean up this engine. Maybe later? I'll let you work. Talk to you later. Okay. All right, how about Jack? You? Hey. I Ooh. picked up a lot of resources. Can you use them to help against the collectors? I figured out those L5Xs. Consider Best yourself girl, scary lucky. girl. Yep. It's not like I keep a library of this shit around. Okay. What about you, Jack? What do you I want already got to? the fish whisket, don't Still worry. checking out your ship. Wouldn't mind putting her through her paces when you're not around. I doubt Joker would appreciate that. At least not while we're working. Relax. Not like she Joy couldn't break riding it. doesn't have the thrill it used to. Besides, if I wanted it, I'd take it. That's, so. Uh, I've been around. Ran with <laughs> gangs, wiped out some gangs, joined a cult. Kept the haircut. I learned how to survive and not be a victim. It's hard to imagine you in a cult. That usually involves a lot of rules. I was looking for answers. Drugs and sex and going to a better place. A better place, right. It was all about money. They wanted to take a colony, shake the suckers down to fund their spread, and guess who was their ace in the hole? They were mm. just like the rest. Didn't give one shit about me. Reminds me of the weird cult with uh, Father Kyle all in the first game on the weird biotic cult. Wait a minute, that's not, that's... What'd you do when you found out? What do you think? She didn't answer the question. Maybe it was them. We met Jack already. Maybe she yelled at us, I will destroy you. I never actually made that connection that we dealt with a biotic cult in the previous game. And and now we have a former cultist biotic, badass biotic, down here below decks. It's probably not, but hey, you never know. You must have met some good people too. You've seen where I came from. Everybody wants something. And because of that, everything is fair game. Murder, assault, kidnapping, drugs, stealing, mm. arson. Done it all. And that's the boring shit. Piracy, theft of military craft, destruction of a space station, and vandalism. That was a good one. No, Kylie, not that, Father Kyle. Not, not that, FK. Um, Wizkid, to fill you in, uh, if you don't recall this from back, back when this was doing this, um, Father Kyle was the for former uh, priest at our university ministry at St. Leo. Um, and so <laughs> I was laughing at that the whole time we were going through that because uh, um, the uh, the Alliance Major who started the whole cult thing in back in Mass Effect 1, uh, his name was something Kyle, Kyle was his last name, I think. Um, and so the cult called him Father Kyle. And so I we were chuckling at that every time anyone said it. All right. We got to go for vandalism first because that's the that's the that's like murder, arson, and jaywalking kind of thing. I'm surprised you'd even mention vandalism in that bunch. That's what the Hanar call it when you crash that space station I mentioned into one of their moons and make a new crater. They really liked that moon. What would that be? Hey, a space station. You're pushing what I can believe. Ain't saying it was easy. Not everything is spur of the moment. Sometimes you gotta work to give people what they deserve. Had some people I hung with for a while. Outlaw colony. Felt like they were like me. Guess that made us a nice target. Turians think they know something about a scorched earth response. Fuck them. We've been over this. Not with Garrus. You were a pirate too? Ties in with the kidnapping. If you hijack a passenger ship and don't kill everyone, anyway. Good lesson. Simpler to just kill them all. Military's a hard target. But that made you some friends. Shouldn't have left the thing unlocked. Besides, parades are boring. I helped. Thank you for your service, Jack. 
I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a troubled history with parades. I was in marching band through high school. Did parades, and a lot of the parades we did were incredibly, incredibly boring, as she indicates. It was basically just, you know, marching through town, at, at you know, at attention for most of the time, playing the same two or three songs over and over. Usually Christmas music, in my experience. Which, yeah, come on. It was, uh, it was it, parades. It soured my experience of parades going forward. Um, Wizkid says, I have much love, love, hate, both, uh, for marching band. That that said, I will say, I did greatly enjoy when I was in marching band my first year uh, at university. Um, I was in the Heart of Thunder marching band at USF. That was great. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Even the parades, there were a couple of parades, like the homecoming parade and things. That was a lot of fun. That was a good time. Because it was more loose. It was more... Um, uh, it was a little less uptight and a little less regimented and a little more hype. Uh, we were kind of the hype crew, um, and it was that was a good time. That was enjoyable, um, but a lot of the times, um, Whiskit says some fond, some not so fond uh, memories. Generally, it got better as I got older, including parades. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Do you ever wonder if you could have done things differently? No. Shouldn't you? There's no reason I should be alive, but I am. You know why? Instinct. It's worked for me so far, and I'm not going to change. I can respect that. Hey, Shepard. No one's ever asked me about this shit. It's strange to talk about. Thanks for asking. Oh, yeah, Wizkid says we marched with the Western Michigan University marching band once. That was fun. Yeah, a uh, college marching band is a... A whole different animal from high school uh in all my experience uh it is it is far more um hype honestly hype is the best word for it uh it's it's way more crazy way more upbeat than than the very regimented kind of high school marching band um because it is um because it's more involved with with sports uh, and because it's so involved with sports, it tends to be more, um, let's go do a thing. Systems, I forget which one. Oh. You know what, yeah, let's just go look through all of them, find side quests, because I know there's side quests in this somewhere. Uh, let's quickly go through them as I talk about some of this stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, I know that, uh, that the, the whole, um, College marching band thing is much, much more closely tied to sports teams and things like that. Anomaly today. Go anomalies. Come back. I'll probably do some mining of these off stream. I might even record a uh, talk bit about some of the some of the planet descriptions. If I find an interesting one, I'll just switch the camera on really quick and explain it. Talk about it. Maybe upload that as its own separate video. That'd be kind of cool. Um, if you guys would be will we interested in watching such a thing, it might be super boring. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was always, um, it was always a, a much more, um, it was less regimented, more, um, it was more fun. It was about having fun and Anomaly kind of detected. typing things up. Hey, Lorek. It's, it's title locked. Launching probes. Yeah, college kid, uh, WizKid says college kids are way less uptight than high schoolers, too, uh, which helps a lot. I'm becoming one of those people who hate teenagers. Uh, I get it. I get it. Uh, it's generally true, although it's a transition um, as well, because I know um, like college freshmen are basically just high schoolers plus a month or two. So uh, there's a... Uh, still gets pretty, uh, it still can be pretty, uh, uptight early on. And especially because a lot of the freshmen I interact with are in college, uh, at least at USF, and that's, uh, that is a different breed, man, I'll tell you. Um, I was one back in my own, and, uh, I will say we, uh, we don't quite know how to chill. Relax and, uh, kind of just let things happen and Interrupted at Parse Point ACO 
Yeah, Kylie says, yeah, when I was a freshman in college, I had to learn to get uh, out of the uptight high school mentality quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even like just having a conversation with your teacher that is not that is not strictly classroom kind of thing. Uh, that's a thing that uh, that a lot of students learn to do, but it takes effort to shake the habit of I am a child and I speak to adult as child and adult kind of. Um, and WizKid says, oh yeah, definitely. Community college was like going to high school with kids I didn't go to high school with. Uh, it was weird, especially as a freshman. Um, yeah, I could see that. Uh, all right, signal scans detect transmitter matching Cerberus encryption. Uh, register to an unknown deep cover operative. Cerberus operative life scans unconfirmed. Other transmission known uh, match known eclipse. Uh, coded communications also detected. All right, cool. Let's go do it. Shooting time. Let's bring our Cerberus people, I guess. Um, also, yeah, Kylie, Jack was being a softy. Jack totally is a softy, which will, which more of that will come out in the third game. A lot of it comes out uh, if you are in a relationship with her, which is um, she actually is a um, she's a softy. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. She really is. Um, despite impressions to the contrary. Um, despite in very intentional impressions she gives off. Um, Whiskey says, I mean, it helps that I was uh, already pretty good at talking to adults as, uh, as people uh, and pretty at, oh, at peace with my own weirdness. Um, uh, but I had yet to fully grasp the capacity for other people's shittiness. Um, not, I, don't, well, I don't know if that's how I'd put it. Maybe. You need incendiary. Stick with a pistol. Double coming. Run it. Serious. About that one. Oh, jeez. Nice. Got him. Anyway. Nothing's gonna hurt me now. Uh, yes, she has very intentional resting bitch face. Jack does. About that one. Taking cover. Yeah. Ooh. Barriers up. Is that it? A lot of ammo up here. Yeah, it was good. Um, oh, you're continuing. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, Kylie says, uh, yeah, now, uh, now when I talk to professors, I still... Uh, understand the authority balance, but it's more of a chill interaction rather than being a ball of anxiety and worry about everything. Yeah, and we generally, um, we generally encourage that rather than the ball of anxiety kind of thing. Um, I, it, I especially, even with, including my own current students, I find that to be far, far more productive if I can hold a conversation like we're beings. Um, I, uh, I occasionally even mention that, hey guys, I'm a YouTuber and feel free to come and ask questions on my streams as if it's office hours, but don't actually expect students to ask questions if you happen to be here listening, listening later. A stream is not necessarily the best place to ask questions as if it's office hours, especially because there's an audience. Um, not a big audience, but there is one. Anyway, um, yeah, we could... Um, uh, Wizkid says the, uh, not a, not a good YouTuber, but I have one. Um, <laughs> uh, Wizkid says the people I hung around with my first semester at college weren't, uh, weren't really the best. I always seem to gravitate towards burnouts whenever I knew to go to a new place. Um, I'll, uh, I mean, I hung out with, I hung out with a lot of burnouts in, uh, in high school. And in fact, that's how I first got into, uh, tabletops. Um, 
first uh, started playing things like uh, Shadowrun, Star Wars, D uh, the Star Wars RPG, the D system, that with, with you know, you know, burnout types. Um, they're good people. They tend to, you know, tend to even if they're you know chill and not exactly uh, super hard school workers. Uh, good people. Um, subject ID, Cerberus, uh, Rachni experiments, okay. Subject captured, uh-oh, uh, an Attican Traverse, uh, data had been oh. interrogated, interrogation failed, uh-oh, that's not good. Um, Rawlings evaded our questions, more invasive methods, um, uh-oh, not live to pass the cipher. Well, that's good and bad. Um, bypass holding cell. Oops. Yeah, Wizkid, maybe you can explain. Burnouts are basically a... Um, uh, burnouts are basically a, uh, a a kind of description of a usually high school, but sometimes college <laughs> subculture. Um, typically people who are intentionally not particularly concerned with... with um, with school, usually a lot of times, like, uh, a lot of times, like, um, pretty often, at least in my experience, uh, into drugs and things, um, or drugs, like, you know, the pothead crowd. Um, not always, but often. Oh, really? They should take the heat off. See what you did there, I guess? Oh. Nothing's gonna hurt me now. Yeah, I don't know uh, if uh, if Eddie, you might have a better description than that. Feel free to feel free to add it. There we go. That is, I used a lot of ammo on. All right, so. Um, so yeah, Wizkid's description, I mean, uh, he says, I mean, I'm still friends with uh, plenty of them. Most of them are decent people, but the um, the topic ones tend to be extremely so. To, uh, I assume you mean toxic. Uh, to the extent where dealing with them without being toxic yourself is hard. Uh, it's true. They, it, it, I mean, you pick up the habits of people you're around, especially, that sort of thing. Let's go this way. Uh, druggies, gamers, uh, conformist, non-conformist types uh, try to be anti-authority, but are actually highly authoritarian in nature, at least in experience. I don't know about that. Maybe, though. Um, I, I was... Uh, I mean, I wasn't super political when I was in high school. At least I wasn't politically, like, sophisticated when I was in high school to make such observations, so maybe maybe that's possible. Not all, but definitely the toxic ones. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I don't, I wouldn't say that, like, generally, uh, Kylie, that burnouts tend to be toxic. It's just that they, that, it's that they tend not to be, um, it's the kind of people who will, who, who don't want to, um, I guess don't want to mesh with society to an extent, uh, and they just kind of, they kind of burn out from the, Especially from education, from school and that sort of thing. Uh, and a lot of times what that'll mean is that they will kind of... You, if you if you hang out with them, that sort of thing, you're going to get pulled into the subculture. Crying, sort of thing. That's at least my... And I, I never really got that because I hung out with basically everybody in burnouts. I kind of bounced between a lot of social groups. You know, well, I wasn't sort of seated, uh, you know, seated neatly in any of them. Let's definitely just give this data straight to the Alliance and give Cerberus the uh, the giant middle finger. How about that? Hey, Wizkid says, and you probably know more about this than I do, and can speak to this more so. Um, now, the ones who are, though, very much so. Most are laid back and chill, but they tend to get a lot, get la uh, tend to uh, get loud and obnoxious, let loud and obnoxious personality make the group. I can be tough. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Makes sense. Data uploaded to Alliance Command. Right. 
Sorry, elusive man. You're not gonna be not really gonna be pleased about that. Oh, you gave me 3,750 credits, so that's cool. <laughs> For undermining you directly. Oh man. Alright. Let's keep wandering around the cluster and see what else we find. If enemy crow can get close to you, they'll charge. You don't want that. <laughs> it's great. All right, fish time. Commander, you received a new message what? at your private terminal. Check that too, I guess, while we're up here. Oh, hey, Kylie says uh, no segue at all. Um, uh, that is not a segue. That is just bringing up a new topic. Uh, but the date went well. Awesome. It's good to hear. Fantastic. A lot of things are going good. 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 Have to, uh, I'm sure, it's updated on such things. Both us, meaning on the stream, since we're more or less following your life closely, um, and, and of course, you know. Um, okay, command Alliance Command says thanks. Um, oh, if this went public, it could do serious damage to Cerberus's image. This intel will take years to decode. Having it's a huge win for the clients. Okay, well, years later, this might be helpful. Uh, Wizkid says, same, uh, same event, same as me uh, talking about, you know, bouncing between social groups in high school. Uh, I'm a social butterfly if it wasn't already obvious. Um, burnouts tend to be hyper open and give lots of people a chance. Uh, but the problem is that they can, uh, they can be betting shittiness. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um... My, my group of burnout friends just had a lot of fun playing tabletop games and stuff, so we didn't really, wasn't, um, it didn't get that sort of, and I think I know what you mean, that kind of, like, that kind of cult of personality kind of thing around somebody who just sort of moved in and takes control of the group sort of thing. Unless it was me, and I don't think it was me. It wasn't me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, and I would, uh, you know, I, I interacted with the with the band kids, the drama kids, because uh, I was in band and I hung out with drama kids because they were right next door from the band room. Um, I hung out with the the smart, the, uh, the, uh, the uncool smart kids uh, and the cool smart kids, which were two very distinct groups. Um, and, of course, the, the, the burnouts I was talking about, uh, there were some other... So, oh, there was the the um, I don't know what to call it, like because there was the the basically the Spanish club, um, basically the Spanish club, the 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 students of the uh, of the couple of uh, of Spanish teachers who all basically hung out and did stuff um, club wise, and then uh, then just sort of also, but yeah, that. Um, Oh, Wizkid says, uh, but yeah, they also breathe drama. It's, I mean, uh, like some people, it, it uh, seems always to have some kind of bullshit happening, and sometimes they can get overwhelmed by several things going on at once. Get that. I, I've i never been overly driven in terms of social interactions. I try to avoid such things and have for a good long time. Other than, okay, that's not true. Other than in Marching Band. Marching band is, is, is more dramatic than Drama Club. Um, ah, so from Diana, this is the lady who her daughter was uh, was killed by Morinth. Ardia Talok uh, told me where to send this. I'm Neff's mother, Diana. We talked when you came to investigate her death. Aria also told me that a dead Asari woman was in wealthy apartments. She was the one who killed my daughter. Thank you. I don't know who brought you into my life, but thank you for avenging my Neff deserved better than this. I couldn't give it to her, but you at least killed that bitch who took what little she had anyway. Took what little she had away. Gratefully, Diana. Closure. It's not much. Closure. Let's keep looking. Ellie says, I wanted to be in the theater program at SLU, but I'm always so busy with choir. Yeah, you really gotta pick one arts program. No messages for you, Commander. Really do. Uh, even both in high school and then even uh, even or college, like yeah, having the time and uh, the, the dedication for more than one uh, involved, what, like significantly involved art program is 
almost impossible. Oh yeah, you're the third kind. You're in a, you're a choir kid. I was, I hung out with some of the choir kids, not as many of them. Do this? No, oh, but I think we did a quest here. I don't know. Let's keep looking. Yeah, Gwizgit says theater's a wonderful hobby, um, but you know, ninety percent of them are snakes. Really? I don't know about that. That's not. I don't know if that's quite fair. I liked my theater friends in high school. I don't, I don't know if I have active friends. No, to be fair, um, you know, if we're we're going to talk about philosophy, which you know me, that's what we're here for, right? Um, we could talk about uh, we could talk about how, what Plato thought of dramatists, um, both the writers and the actors. He had a very very low view of dramatists, uh, actors especially, but in general. Either writers or actors, either way. Um, this kid says, I'm a great singer, uh, which is why I chose band. Uh, yeah, same. I have, I have a decent amount of talent for singing, because I have a good ear for pitch. Not perfect, but I can I can match pitch well and that sort of thing. Um, I have a decently good baritone voice. I mean, not that I don't actually have a, a baritone like euphonium. I want one, uh, but that's a separate thing. Um, anyway, though, yeah, I uh, I think it helps to be able to sing at least minimum well and. Um, but what about your lived experiences? I'm not. See. Whiz kids lived experiences, huh? I do love acting, but thespians were looked down upon for a reason. Multiple, actually. Well, well, I can explain the reason, at least why the why Greek and Roman culture both uh, both looked down on uh, actors, thespians, as you say. Um, oh, hey, Whiz kids says, play, uh, that, funnily enough, his brother played baritone in band. So did I. I loved it. I um, I played baritone in marching band. Uh, I played oboe, concert band, flute, and tenor saxophone in jazz band. I was all over the place. Basically, the only section uh, that kept me out successfully was percussion. Sections, two, two sections. Percussion uh, and, uh, and clarinets. Because the band director didn't know how to play clarinet. And none of the, the basically the entire clarinet section just sort of embargoed me and said no one would teach I never learned to play clarinet. Yeah, I, I started off playing oboe. Started in middle school. I was atrociously bad. I had no control over uh, over embouchure, so you know, tuning didn't happen at all. Uh, and I had no control over volume either. Uh, it was it was very bad. I was a very very bad oboist for my first year or two. Uh, Anomaly detected. Almost hilariously bad. I, I actually have gone back through. I, I listened to an old recording of myself somewhere in concert, like the concert band, and I could very clearly hear myself as the oboist who was very loud and very out of tune. Well. Oh, yes, Eric is absolutely right. Yeah, look at my fingers. See this? See this? See that angle? See how I point? See how that doesn't point straight? That's from oboe, because oboe, your 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 hands are very, uh, your fingers are very curled and they're very close together because it's a very small instrument. It does terrible things to your fingers and long term. Uh, you should see very old oboists. I've uh, I've like worked with professionals and things and they've got, it looks like they have arthritis, but they don't. Um, just because of like how messed up their fingers are. Um, I can't believe none of you knew that. I've, I've waved my fingers around. I guess they look normal. Like straightening them out and doing things like that. Also, why I cry. Um. Yeah, Whiskid says uh, our band director was a uh, clarinetist. Ah, huh. they taught me. Um, don't try to date clarinetists. It would just be crazy. Um, I can't say I have experience with that. So. Oboe. Oh no. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's uh, it's a really good, it's a beautiful instrument. I absolutely love it. I love it played well, and I eventually actually did learn to play it well. I took a lot of practice over the years, but um, I did eventually become a at least decent oboist. Uh, and I, I love the instrument. It's absolutely gorgeous. Scans have found something. Um, actually, you know, my one of my favorite uh, oboe pieces is from the movie The Mission. Let me uh, write this down. If you've seen The Mission, uh, it is uh, it's a good film um, about uh, a couple of missionaries in I think it's South America who get caught up in. Um, uh, caught up in basically war, uh, and one of them like plays the theme of the movie uh, on oboe throughout in these like beautiful locations. It's amazing. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful piece. Uh, it's one of my favorite. Uh, um, <laughs> Whiskit says oboes continue to be the weirdest common wind, uh, common weird instrument. Yeah, true. Bassoon's weirder. Uh, to be fair. Um, I've I only played a played bassoon a little bit. I never got that. I never got a hang of. I never got the hang of it. Um, there were a few instruments that I've tried, uh, and I learned a little bit. I learned the basics, but I was very very bad at it. Um, I was atrocious at French horn, not good at it at all. Uh, I was pretty bad at trumpet, because of the small embouchure thing. Um, and like I said, I never got never got the hang of bassoon. Uh, I can't do strings well. Can't have my my hands do different things like the bow and the and the uh, the fingers on the strings thing. Same with keyboards. I'm bad at I'm bad at both of them. I know how vaguely. Um, even guitar, that sort of thing. I, I I could never get it to work. I could never coordinate my two hands doing different things like that on an instrument. I do one particular fingering of an instrument that works fine, but not two different things. It throws me off. Um. French horn wants to know my, know my location. That's ominous. My attempts at playing French horn were an insult to proper French horn players. And I've, I've apologized to some of them for my attempts, the ones who were trying to teach me. It says, I only learned to play um, the trombone directly my junior year. Uh, so I feel I miss playing sometimes. Yeah, I, um, I occasionally play my flute. Um... I've got a tenor sax. Uh, it's been probably a year, uh, really, since I've uh, since I've cracked it out. Um, I should sometime. I would need to get a. Um, I might need to get a new read for. It. Information about the Estevanico's final hours. Warning: disturbing the wreck could cause it to become unbalanced and fall over the cliff's edge. Ah! Oh, yep, that's about to happen. gonna happen soon oh yeah that probably was the last time wasn't it last time i played tax fund was when i tried to teach you on erica that was uh that was a while ago that was a good while ago you give it a try again good i almost found a uh decent clarinet for for erica that was one that she, she was wanting to give a try i jump i can't jump this isn't andromeda um but yeah that would be uh that'd be a decent one to try let me, um, there. Cool. Um, Whiskey says, part of my trauma with band stems from the fact that I knew I was, uh, bad, but nobody cared enough about me to, uh, really try and help me. I hate people. That's rough. It's really rough. I, uh, I was very, very self-motivated when it like I said, I, I either taught myself or basically forced people to teach me almost every instrument in the, uh, in the band and a few elsewhere. Bagpipes and uh, and uh, a little bit of violin. Um, beyond the ordinary band kind of thing. Um, yeah, Erica says, just give me a clarinet. It's the only instrument I found really easy. Um, come on. Yeah, I we need to fix that. Uh, Erica says I never, uh, I can't read music. I memorize the keys I have to press, and yes, I agree. I dislike that a lot. It's, that's it's like what in the world? Come on, 
There we go. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't like that. Need to need to not do that. It's not like a new line. It's just just a new alphabet. This kid says, like I said, love hate. I didn't get my swagger till like my second year of college. After being musical, my fr uh, in a musical, my friend, your swagger. This is gonna go real poorly in a second. Uh oh, uh oh, huh? Ah, uh? oh no, I'm fine. We're good. I mean, everything is shifting, so we're not exactly good, but okay. Uh oh, I better hurry. I don't know if I should be disturbing this. Maybe I should have just left it. Maybe the shuttle should have dropped me off where the big flashing red light is. That would have been probably smart. Oh, jeez. Hey, uh, alright. Over there. What's that? Nothing. Let's, uh, let's just... So we don't all die. Um, yeah. Let's go. Go. Um. I'm fine. Shockingly. Good. This thing is about to fall, isn't it? This kid says, what, you think I just came free preformed as the meme lord who stands before you today? Ha! Funny joke. Took me uh took me a while to be as brave and brazen as I am today. <laughs> oh jeez. Kylie says I'm just learning how to uh how to read and understand music up till now. I've uh, just learned by ear. Yeah. It's Learning music is one of the learning to read music is one of those things where it is much easier long term, but it's a very intense short term investment to learn to make everything easier. Um, also, I will say it's probably, I don't know, it feels like it's a little bit less necessary for voice than it is for instrument. Um, it's easier to learn by ear if you're singing. It is to learn by ear if you're. Um. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. That's possible, too. Uh, that is at least that kind of... That, uh, that distinction seems right to me. Skedaddle. Check our messages, because we probably got one about the Estebanico there. Uh, even then, Wizkid says, the uh, crazier the piece, the harder it is to decipher, Man, especially if you only have one part of the piece. Very true. Um, and it really, you know, just playing one piece and practicing alone, practicing your part on your own, is is very different from practicing as part of the ensemble. Very, very different. Uh, hey, Dr. Richard Talos, curator of the Alliance Museum for Galactic Exploration, Earth. Cool. Commander Shepard, you have our thanks for recovering the data from the uh, MSV Estevanico. The data shows that the ship was attacked and overrun by blood pack mercenaries and fort soldiers. Uh, according to dated records, uh, this was the first Alliance crew to encounter the Vorcha. How frightened they must have been. Indeed. We're sending salvage crews now to recover whatever they can for the museum. Thank you again for your uh, Oh yeah, Kylie says sheet music for choir and stuff. Uh, Italian pieces, some Italian pieces, some contemporary. Yeah, it is, um, that is also another difference, uh, because I've seen choir sheet music. No messages for you, Commander. Uh, it usually has all or at least most of the parts, or at least all of the, all of the parts of one, I don't know, what's the term, part? So all of the different, uh, the harmonies within, within soprano, for example. Uh, because there will be different ones, like first soprano versus second, third, etc. Um, and... That's usually on the same sheet, 
whereas band music does not tend to do that. You'll have a piece of sheet music for first clarinet, a piece of sheet music for a second clarinet, etc. Um, and it's it's all split apart and different, which makes it um, makes it harder to see where your part fits in with everything else. Um, which is why uh, whoops, why ensemble practice is I think it's the best way to practice. Instrumental. Uh, and uh, maybe on the other hand, though, maybe that's just an excuse not to practice on one's own. So, you know, don't let that be an excuse not to practice on one's own, of course. Always practice. I, that was always drilled very deeply into my hands to make sure practice, practice, practice. Never stop practicing. Practice every day. Um, but, but that's... The, uh, that's just my uh, my old band memories coming up. You know, daily and daily music practice, that sort of thing. On my own, not not talking about ensemble practice. Because you have to know your part and that sort of thing. Works um WizKid says that's why uh, having a good band director is so important. When I was uh, practicing for concert band, um, uh, I would load up the songs on YouTube and go along with the song. Worked pretty well, actually. Yeah, this is not a luxury I had back in my back in my day. Uh, most of the songs we had were not on YouTube because YouTube was basically uh, like cat videos, comedy sketches, and like occasional news commentary. That was it. Uh, YouTube was not a place for music for the most part back in the day. If you wanted to have a recording, you had to have a studio recording. Which some, sometimes we would have, and we would be able to play along with it, that sort of thing. The director would give to us. Uh, or, better, a lot of times, um, a lot of times, uh, our director would give us the, the sort of moving sheet music, so we could follow along with it as it plays and as it so shows the sheet music, even if it plays digitally, that sort of thing. It's a really good program that a lot of us have. Okay, for this one, we need tally. We need... Eras or Kasumi. Yeah, we need overloads like crazy. Yeah, Garrison Kasumi, that'll work. Or Garrison Tally, sorry, Gar Garrison Tally. This is one of the most frustrating combats in the game. I'm gonna save as soon as we land, because this one's, like I said, incredibly, unbelievably frustrating. Um, okay, okay. Uh, arc projector, because I'm just going to zap these bastards it's a bunch of so to explain what we're about to it's a bunch of mechs that are trying to destroy cargo i have to kill the mechs before they kill the cargo what i get from this mission depends on how much cargo i save from the giant mechs which is why we need tally because she's gonna she's gonna hack one it's gonna shoot the other ones it's gonna distract them it's gonna help a little bit um anyway but yeah so this is gonna be gonna be a good one let's do it Those things. Those things. Hate those things. Also, it just struck me that I just did a back in back in my day when we had we didn't have fancy new fa YouTubes. You got it. They've seen us. Primary defense is Hack it. And where's the other one? Over there. Darn it. Sir?
Uh oh. Look out! Fire in the hole. Uh, drone. Uh, it's a big old zappy. Damn it! Really? Okay. That was that was it, right? Okay, cool. Oh my god, that's awful. We got twelve. It's not bad. It's not good. Not bad. Ugh. Okay, cool. That was uh that was awful. But okay. I need ammo really badly. I just blew through all this. Anyway. Um, yeah, I just realized it did one of the, like, back in my day, we didn't have the internet. We had, we had computer program that would, that would scream at you when you wanted it to play music. It would make, it would make ding-dong bing noises, and it would go, it would, it would try to play the music, but it would do so very, do with digital noise, instead of with instruments. I'll stop now. Um... But yeah, you get you get the idea. It's uh actually have back in my day. It's once in a while and I'm not even uh not even ironically. Not ironically. All right, that'll do it. Let's uh let's go away cuz let's go away now. All right, see you later. <laughs> Whiskey says, "Yeah, we also had burned CDs." Uh yeah, that's right. It was not better than streaming. Uh, you know how I know that? Uh, because we still have burn CDs. We never use them. Good, but I don't. Yes, yeah, Eric, I know. 12 is bad. 12 is very awful. Not good at this one, and I never claimed to be good at this one. So. Um, oh, jeez! Most you got was 16. I might have been I might have gotten 16 once on like really low difficulty at one point but I have failed Commander, that mission because I got time. zero before I've had to start over um I think the secret is uh I wasn't spamming my heavy weapon spamming heavy weapons is kind of the way that I think uh yeah all right we couldn't land without fear that it would destroy the crates why are the credits into your account? Damn glad I have you with us. All right, cool. I guess still did crappy, but more than half, I guess. Crap, but it was halfway decent. Crap. Anyway, since uh, since we it says maybe I just like it for the retro appeal. God, I'm old. Don't call CDs retro. My primary way of listening to music in high school is retro now. I mean, that's not true. I, I had an empathy. Yes, that's right. I had a dedicated MP3. I even had an iPad, uh, an um, iPod Mini. What was it? I think it was a Mini. A little swirly one that was about that big. Um. It was downloaded MP3s, not, uh, not, uh, just, not, uh, streaming music that you don't own that game. Um, it's also because I prefer physical over digital. Calm down, sir. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, I get it, but I understand that. And I, I don't know, I, maybe I do. CDs are gonna are very quickly going to become the uh, become the equivalent of records. They're they're gonna be a hipster thing. That's so bizarre. It's like um, remember the last season of Parks and Recreation? I don't know if, who's seen this, seen the show. It's a wonderful show. 
the last season they jumped ahead several years into I think it was 2018 because the show ended in like 13 or 14 so they skipped ahead five years or so. um, and basically they just completely called they completely predicted what the world would be like in five years um, with like drone deliveries of things and uh, invasive uh, invasive tech companies and uh, like all kinds of stuff that was actually pretty impressive. Oh, wait a minute. There's Ezo in the... There's Ezo here. I need that. Is there even? Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Moment zero. Launching probe. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh... I was... I'm old enough to remember Launching cassettes. Probe. Cassette tapes were the were the music I grew up with. Um, not not eight tracks. I'm not old enough for eight tracks. I'm not quite old enough. They were still around when I was really little, when I was a kid. Um, but cassettes were were more more mainstream, more popular. By the time I was you know old enough to know what music was. But yeah, it's, uh, that was the thing. Make them. I'm old. You, um, what's the opposite of you kids keep me young? Since, uh, uh Whiskit says, I remember cassettes because my dad had a bunch of them with Christmas music. Ah, so they remained in existence. Launching probe. Tons of cassettes. And I have no way of playing them anymore. I want to do. I don't even know where there would be a cassette player. Maybe, oh god, stop making me old. Yeah, it's probably that. This'll do. That's it for that. Moment Zero is super rare, so I'm gonna actually mine for it. On stream, because I don't want to forget. What is happening? There we go. Let's come up. Get the gas. Uh, your dad's also a late boomer, so yeah, mine, uh, mine too. My parents were both born late fifties. Probe away. Probe launched. At least as I remember, VHS tapes, Tamagotchis, Webkins, and all the stuffs. So I was too old for Webkin. Never got. I never really got the hang of Tamagotchis. I was. I was old enough for that. They were probably my age group, but I never. Maybe I was a little too old for them. I don't know. Um. But I never. I never. Got. I didn't. Launching probe. Had a real life actual probe cat away. to keep alive, to. Uh, Torturously snuggle. My cat was very cooperative. It was a rag doll. Uh, also, uh, interestingly enough, was mostly a rag doll uh, and just kind of let me just hang out with him and toss him around and cuddle him and stuff and all that sort of thing because he grew up away. like that. But also, once in a while, like when he had enough, he had enough. And that's how I got injuries. And that's how I got a few of the scars I have. I have a scar on my knee. Uh, and I have a scar right here under my nose. A little patch across, almost uh, off. That's gross exaggeration, but yeah. That's because I put my face in his belly. And if you know cats, you know that's a bad idea. I didn't realize it was a bad idea. I was a child. Launching probe. This kid saw I saw a working uh WizKid saw a working VHS player at a funeral home. Uh we had my grandma showing it. It was shook. I, I don't think that's what should have shaken you at, at you know. But I understand. Launching probe. I think I still have a TV around somewhere that uh, like one of those boxy TVs that has an inbuilt VHS player. I think. I don't know where. But I think I've got it around somewhere. I forget if it's in one of my closets or 
was at my parents' house or something like that. It exists. Launching this. Uh, Erica had Tamagotchis. Multiple. Several generations. Uh, is a good mother. <laughs> yes, you are a good mother, and I guess that was practice, so that's good. Not I. Tamagotchis. Presumably. Maybe they did. I don't know. Uh, the trick was knowing to pause it uh, when you knew you couldn't take care of it. Uh, I think that trick works with... Um, obviously that wasn't the only thing that shook was still. That's good. Launching probe. Whiskit says also, Erica, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Maybe it was just it was more of a girl thing. Maybe, but it wasn't really. There, there were boys probe. who were all about Tamagotchis too when I was a kid. Maybe there were different ones. There were. Yeah, I didn't know you could pause them either. I, I never I had. I maybe had one. Yeah, apparently you can pause them, so hold. I, I trust my wife's expertise on this. So many probes doing that. All right, uh, let's go to Shrike Abyssal. There's probably something there. No side quest. Anyway, since you guys are making me feel old, um, I want to talk about why Plato hated actors. Not hated actors. He thought they were shifty. Um, this was uh, this is something I went into in uh, my video on. Um, Plato's Guide to RPGs. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, uh, if you guys have seen this one. I highly recommend it, uh, WizKid especially, since we play D&D, &D, and this is the kind of... I actually mean that this is a how-to guide Anomaly on how to play, play RPGs. Um, yeah. um, and I go in... In that one, I kind of go into... Um, How uh, how Plato would say we ought to imitate? Oh, do it. Um, blood pack mercenaries. Okay, blood pack sounds good. <laughs> Whiskey says so the def definition of shifty can confirm. Well, why would that be, right? Well, excuse me. An actor is by definition someone who is capable of imitation. What that means is that they are cap they are themselves pliant, malleable, changing. Uh, they can shift. Let's go to... Let's do... Front. And Zaid. Cool combo. Um, but if they're capable of, uh, of imitation, and especially imitating multiple things, not just one thing, um, impact rate. Yeah, let's go with that. Um... Uh, or mercenary. <sighs> sure. All right. Uh, apparently, if anyone still has one or wants to know this. You press the outside buttons on a Tamagotchi at the same time. That is how you, how you pause it. Neat. Good to know. Indicator ends. All right. Anyway, um, yeah. So a, an actor is necessarily one who is capable of imitating anything, uh, as Whiskit says. They're in flux. I am I don't know if it's necessarily that they're highly emotional, uh, but they are capable of uh, imitation of emotion, uh, is more what I would say. Why does he have that gun? Whatever. Change weapons. Got it. That's fine, I guess. There we go. Um, 
resources good and ready. You want to come mine these rocks yourself. Uh, everything ready for the attack. Got the additional Vorch I asked. I would... All right, cool. Um, all right, let's, let's move in and do our thing. Um, they're all sociopaths? I wouldn't say they're all sociopaths. Uh, I would say that they are capable of sociopaths. That makes sense. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, sending back the moron Vorcha. Uh, we've done wheeling. Uh, ask assistance. Okay. So the Vorcha suck. That's what I'm gathering. Yeah, Whiskus is always in flux. Uh, not bad traits for a thespian, but dangerous and a friend or acquaintance, especially with uh, romance and intrigue involved. Uh, there's no reason they're all bisexual. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, but they all uh, seem pretty sus. I get what you're saying, but Plato's point, and again, I would uh, I recommend my um, my video on this. Um, I am Krogan. Um, my video on what Plato has to say about this, I, I highly recommend uh, for that sort of thing. Diary. Um, because he goes into, Plato does, Plato goes into why the uh, the actor in particular is, uh, is, you know, sus, as you say. As the kids say, they, the, that game with, with the robot alien things. Um... Robots, I know they're not aliens, but just just go with me here. Um, yeah, they um, actors, according to Plato, are imitators primarily. They can imitate uh, if they can imitate both good and bad characters. What that means is that they have an element of good in them, and they're capable of bad. So if they imitate something that is lesser than them. That means is that they are in taking, they're taking in those qualities and those habits and those traits. They're inhabiting them. So somebody who's capable of doing this, what they need is an expertise in being bad and being unjust. If someone's capable of imitating just character or a character with flaws or that sort of thing. Uh, and so what that means is that not only is one you know capable of doing so, but then by doing so, one sort of habituates oneself to doing the wrong thing, which we ought not to do. This kid says even the good ones seem sus. Although not all, all actors I know have, have fucked me over a lot. But not all, jeez, man, worse than you're. You are more. Uh, you are more harsh on actors than Plato, and that is really saying. Something. Um, Plato thinks that they ought to all be expelled from the city and never be permitted in, uh, except specifically on festivals where they will be acting and then asked kindly, uh, but firm, firmly to leave afterwards. Come on. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, Plato's point is not so much about their innate suspicion uh, or them being capable of deception so much. Uh, that is maybe a concern, but it's more that they are prone to imitating evil, right? imitating things that are lower than them. And so it, 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 it um, habituates them into villainy. Um, Whiskid says, it's because I have experience with thespians and burnouts. Uh, from, uh, what I'm saying is uh, that the hippy-dippy type of folk of all flavors, despite feeling kinship with them, are really my type. Okay. I, I mean, I understand. Um, I uh, wasn't a... It's fine. Nice shooting. Coming! Kill them! Nothing can stop! 
Not. There's more. Come on. Got him. There we go. Anyway. Yeah. That's, uh, it's... Take a look at that. It's a manner... It's a matter of, um... Of what one imitates and why. Careful! And the, uh... The habits that doing so can... In, we need can to leave. Form. Yeah, we need to leave. Let's go. Uh-oh. Uh, and part of what that means is... Uh, so my proposal, right, for my my, uh, my sort of Plato's Guide to RPGs and to... to whether that's, you know, video gaming kind of RPGs that's or whether that is um, tabletop RPGs uh, is a careful, uh, careful balance between imitation, so acting... And narration, right? or you know, third-person descriptions, uh, and it comes down to um, a matter of acting, uh, or even just voicing, uh, what your character would do if your character's actions are aspirational, or above you, or something that you ought to be doing. But the narrating, your care if what your character is doing is something below you, untoward, various. This presents, this presents particular challenges to me as a dungeon master, mostly because I'm mostly a forever DM. E, um, because it means my villains, if I am to thoroughly avoid um, moral degradation, the effects they're in, uh, it means that I have to do a lot of careful narration of villains' actions uh, in very much in the third third person narrative sense, rather than acting as the this kid says amorous is pretty much just me but 0.5 times as neurotic and more awkward um yeah okay and i mean part of that too is uh even if it is just you um it so Playing a character like this, um, it not only uh, is an opportunity to to act aspirationally, right? or not only a, um, a a danger in terms of acting poorly uh, and that having an impact on one's moral development as character, but it's also an opportunity to act aspirationally, right? So doing what Emrys ought to do uh, and using that kind of uh, that kind of role playing, right? To, uh, in order to develop one's own actual character, one's own actual habits and virtue. Uh, honestly, that is a a great way of using gaming uh, as a kind of moral development, moral practice. Uh, it's similar to um, um, what would be the term, especially in uh, especially in, uh, in sports or in performance, a uh, kind of mental rehearsal, where you go through um, blood pack reading. Let's go do that. Um, where you go through your performance or your or the game or whatever it is that you'd be doing in your mind, so you can practice without physically practicing. Um, but it's a level above that. It goes beyond that slightly. Um, so it actually does become a real, a real form of practice, especially for practicing the kind of things that one would not ordinarily. Right? I can't go save the galaxy from ancient machines, uh, but I can play the role of Commander Shepard, uh, who is a hero, and I can be heroic. Right? I can train myself to think heroically, to be heroic, and to do. Uh, and to do the right thing in these circumstances, that sort of thing. Uh, in these circumstances that I simply could never find myself in. Um, and what that can do is that can help me to sort of practice for the kinds of situations that I would find myself in. 
owning the virtues of uh, of wisdom, uh, of prudence, uh, of courage especially. Courage is very hard to practice because you find yourself in a dangerous situation and you're not courageous. It'll go poorly. Uh, so practicing courage is very difficult outside of a, a situation like this. Aim or simulation, what have you. Launched. We're gonna we're gonna be invasion. All units report to ready stations for possible anti-invasion protocol. Detected in orbit. All units report to ready stations for possible anti-invasion protocol. That's Repeat. hilarious. <coughs> Whiskey says it's good for exploring of who you'd in uh, who you'd internal who your internalized self is in a way that your physical self could never act themselves in. You can practice being a hero so when there's a time uh, when the time comes. You're more likely to act heroically. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, All units report to ready stations for possible anti-invasion. Launching that's probe. exactly what I mean, right? So scans have found something. I'm not you know, I, I mentioned this in the video, right? I'm an academic, I'm a very mild mannered kind of guy. Um physical courage is not something I tend to have the opportunity to practice, in especially not in reality, in real life. Um uh, this is Eclipse. Let's go with oh, Samurai Kasumi. Um, and so when I uh, Reeve is amazing, absolutely incredible. Oh man, that's really good. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, nothing for Kasumi. Uh, but yeah, I, I really think uh, that it is a the, the lack of an opportunity for me means that in a lot of cases, you know, this winds up being my practice. Maybe this in particular, maybe this in particular. Uh, but this kind of thing means this is what what I wind up doing in order to learn how to act around. Because uh, I can't really do much truly heroic uh, in the position of philosophy professor. Um, except on very, very rare and strange occasions. Uh, and in those rare, very rare and strange occasions, not having had any practice means that I'm very unlikely to do the right thing in the face of challenge. Or act courageously. Uh, but if I am practiced in virtue in a virtual environment what that means is that i'm marginally more capable of acting in the right way if and when the time does come whoops i'll tear you apart Going silent. There they are. Ooh, she got him. Cool. Let's see what else. Uh, Wizkid says exactly uh, part of why I love video games so much is it gives you uh, it gives me an opportunity uh, to prove to myself I can be heroic and not just uh, all the things I aspire to be it's why in part uh, gaming is so incredibly popular and uh, yeah and it's again like I said it can be and probably should be a kind of moral education as well like it, not only is it you know there is an appealing aspect to the kind of the power fantasy of being a hero, and that sort of thing. Uh, there's also the aspect of learning to be virtuous. Or, you know, knowing what the right thing to do is, but then being able to practice that uh, under attack. Okay. That's correct. We are attacking you. Um, being able to put that into practice, even in a virtual environment, 
is quite meaningful. And it's not something that. Floking. Yeah. It's not something that we ordinarily would be able to, to act courageously and I will hold them. make the right choices in an impossible or difficult situation. Now you see me. Can do it. Oh jeez. Rocket. Um Clean headshot. There we go. Um, Whiskid says, some games do morality right, Dishonored, KOTOR, and New Vegas especially. Um, to an extent, uh, I will say, though, that a kind of moral ambiguity can be a good thing in a game, and I don't, what I don't mean by that is that it's good for this will occupy them. You know, it's good to actually consider morally, moral choices to be subjective. Because obviously it's not, right? We should understand moral choices to be uh, significant. It should matter. Um, stop screaming. Neutralized one. Neutralized one. Are we good? Jesus, that was crazy. All right. Anyway saying before the screaming started um, that moral ambiguity in a game can be a good thing to an extent right? where it's um, where there is more than one option neither of which is perfect or both of which are good and it really matters which one we choose um, this like the Mass Effect series is an example of this right um, it's Paragon Renegade is a kind of morality system but it's not all that straightforward. You can be mostly renegade. Or Alan was scripted. Script. Grabbing cover. What? Where? There we go. Um, I'll tear you apart. You can still be heroic in this game if you're if you're a renegade, right? It's just a different type of choice. It's a different prioritization. Um, either one can hypothetically be a form of heroism. Either can be aspirational. It's just it has to be for the right reasons. There we go. Um, and it can, of course, also be for the wrong reasons, and it also can be, you know, moral degradation as well. Oh, jeez. Crap. Let's try this again, shall we? There. Sorry guys, I'm having a little tough time of it. I haven't been talking too much. Nice work. Now finish them. Darn. Going dark. Is that it? Okay, decrypted data, got it. Incomplete. Uh, further details are required to trace Terrell's location. The data has been sent to Cerberus for further analysis. That's great, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, someone was being very extra just screaming forever. All right, cool. That was it's kind of a waste. Anyway, let's uh, let's find some 
ammo. Is there any more around here? Anything else I need to pick up before I head out? Yes, I think they're. Oh, I saw Pauline. No, there it is. Ah, there. Anyway. But yeah, it is a, um... How we can go. It, it, it's largely a matter of... What in the hell? What? Did I just get landed on by the shuttle or something? Okay, that was really weird. I don't know where it's going to reset me to. Ah, oh, Jesus, really? Oh, going dark. Well done. On my screen. Mind over matter. Reach him. Okay, well, let's try this again, shall we? Thank you. Jeez, I have two shots left. Alright. Going silent. Neutralize. Okay. it? That's it. Okay. Let me go get the thing first, so I don't die this time. Whatever happened there, that was weird. I think it might have been because I was on the bridge, and it, like, despawned while I was extracting. I don't know. I'd rather that not happen. Anyway, let's get out of here. Hooray, I didn't die this time. That was weird. So, anyway. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the other thing uh, is I mentioned Thursday uh, that today in class we were going to be discussing... Um, we were going to be discussing Epicureanism. That'll be a lot of fun, uh, and it was. It was a good. It was a good talk. Um, in part because, uh, especially my first class, did not care much for chapter on Epicureanism, um, and quite frankly, I it was not. It was not very well put together. Uh, it was on a. I mean. A philosophy which is not really a school of thought, which is I should say a school of thought. A school of thought which is not really taken very seriously uh, by most people today. History it's more or less been a foil to Platonism, uh, or a kind of excuse for hedonism, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, it's not really, like I said, not uh, serious uh, of a school of thought, at least uh, as considered by most people. Uh, and, you know, most people kind of caught on to that. Um, in part, it's because of the, the sort of inherent flaws in Epicureanism. Things like yeah, their, uh, their rejection of logic in favor of uh, emotion and desire, uh, which, you know, is kind of the opposite of what, the, of what philosophy is supposed to be about. Uh, nothing interesting here. 
so that's you know, part of the problem. Uh, the other part of the problem is the un the non universalizability of it, which is which everyone seemed to notice is that there seems to be a problem with with Epicureanism that it doesn't tell us anything about how we should treat other people, uh, other than as objects for our own pleasure. And honestly, I can't I can't counter that from within from within Epicureanism. Uh, there is no way to. On purely hedonistic Epicurean principles, there is no way to justify being um, being altruistic to others unless one derives pleasure from it. And there's no way to tell someone not to, you know, serial kill or whatever um, if one derives pleasure from it and can avoid the pain of it. Um, it is... Yeah, Wizkid, it's... Uh, it's yeah, similar to a Brave New World kind of mentality. So yes, to, to a significant degree, yeah. Um, Brave New World is, is Epicureanism run amok. Um, Epicureanism, basically the, the, the core guiding principle is, uh, is pursue pleasure, avoid pain, and balance them. Notice that certain pleasures require uh, the endurance of certain pains, and sometimes that means that you'll have to endure pain for the sake of some greater pleasure. Sometimes that means you'll have to forego a certain pleasure in order to avoid a greater pain, that sort of thing. So it does balance out. It is a kind of... Uh, there is a kind of mean to it, but it's more or less hedonic calculus. Calculating what is the most pleasurable and what is the least painful thing that one can do. Uh, and it is, of course, very, very self-centered, self -centered. Like I said, most philosophers have not taken Epicureanism seriously, and that is for good. Um, I was honestly surprised to see it in this book, uh, and also surprised to see it in this in our, our syllabus, but, you know, every once in a while you need a nice foil to uh, the serious schools of thought uh, that we wanted to talk about. Probe away. Uh, the birthplace of free living for its own uh, for its own plates and left its degeneracy. Shocking. Yeah. Well, it was, it was it's an ancient school of thought. It goes back to uh, the third or fourth century BC. Uh, so it's not like this is new. This is it just was not taken seriously by most people at the time. Um, but uh, you, uh, Wizkid, you've uh, you've you've read this part because I sent this part to you. Um, the author here uh, got him. Uh, Hiram, Hiram or Hiram, Hiram Crespo, uh, which doesn't sound like a real name, but I don't, I don't know if it is or not. Um, he's um, not only an Epicurean, but but um, and not only quite the subjectivist. He more talks about his own story than anything else uh, in the chapter, unlike the rest of the chapters in this book, which actually is, is decently good. Uh, it's a pretty good overview of a lot of uh, worldviews, philosophical uh, systems, and that sort of thing. Um. It's called How to Give a Look, Live a Good Life, edited by Maxima Pigliucci, uh, who's pretty brilliant. Um, back, let's go grunt. It's this time. I don't know. Who haven't we brought in a while? We haven't brought Jack in a while. Let's bring Jack. Um... Right, that'll do us, yeah. Serrator. Play more, absolutely. All right, cool. Anyway, um, it, it's a it's a pretty good book uh, as far as sort of an overview goes. Um. Anyway, though, but, uh, but yeah, this is, it's it's very subjectively written the chapter, and he is also just absolutely insufferable. Um, I will say it is the it is the least it is the least favorite of 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 the um, the worldviews that we've looked at at least so far, and probably the least favorite that we will have looked at even uh, just because it's it's quite honestly silly. It's also very um, oh wait. Uh, it's also it's also strictly materialistic in terms of reductive physicalism, atomism. Right? Epicurus, Epicurus was an atomist, an ancient atomist, so everything is particles and void, form, material. The fog on a planet 
Internet surface is interfering with your navigation. The nearby beacon towers may serve as a navigational contingency. Right. I got it. Switch up, switch up. Switchity, switchity, swoo. All right, cool. Let's do this. All right. Anyway, uh, but yeah, he is uh, the the guy is uh, Aaron Crespo, the author of this, is pretty insufferable, um, and it's he gravely misunderstands a lot of the things that he tries because to... um, he writes about um, a lot of other schools of thought, sort of in comparison and by contrast to Epicureanism, um, and it's it's like a sad caricature uh, of a lot of uh, both Eastern and Western thought. Um, it, it's quite clear to me, at least, uh, that he did the thing... Toxic atmosphere stings a bit. Moment. Oh, no, you are. Okay. Jack is. Um, he really strikes me as um, as the whole, like, uh, Hello, dead people. The very common, um, Take it! I, uh, I went to 12 years of Catholic school, so I know what I'm talking about more than you, because you only spent four years in, uh, intensively studying theology at the graduate level. Um, that kind of thing, you know. Um, he does mention having grown up Catholic and having left the church, um, for pelvic issues, as usual. That's, that's how it works. Um, and, of course, due to a gross misunderstanding of, uh, of church doctrine. Even just sort of generally how Christian thought in general works. Uh, I'll point to a couple of examples as well, if you... Specifically, but... Uh, uh, for one, um, he claims essentially that... Uh, that Catholicism in particular, and most of the, he says most of the sort of Western tradition um, holds Hold pleasure. Fire, claims that pleasure is intrinsically wrong. It, you know, thinks of pleasure as evil, which is obviously quite silly. If you've read anything. Um... Yes, there is a uh, there is an element of redemptive suffering that is very different from saying that suffering is a good thing or that uh, pleasure is a bad thing. Um, what he means in particular is quite obviously that uh, pleasure of certain sorts can be disordered and not be conducive to flourishing. And even the Epicureans will admit that. He just doesn't want to. Um, to be fair, Epicureans will think that it's different sorts of pleasure that, that are uh, not conducive to flourishing than almost everyone else who's ever thought about anything. But, still. Um, Wizkid says, oh, of course he did. Why is it, uh, why is it these followers are always the same brand of misunderstandings and drops? What the hell are they doing? Because it's very precisely the same kind of misunderstanding that leads to this mentality. It's, um, uh, this kind of... Uh, Looks like we just missed a good fight. I guess this kind of misunderstanding, um, uh, or this kind of hostility, maybe I could say, to, uh, to the faith, and in general, really, he's quite hostile to the Western tradition as a whole. Um, he's very hostile to the, the Western tradition, meaning Plato and Aristotle as well, um, and he apparently experimented with some other school, Eastern schools of thought, but it thought it was kind of weird, and so didn't... went back to something more familiar to his own tradition, meaning Arianism. Completely ignoring the fact that everyone within the Western tradition, almost without exception, kind of chuckles at Epicureanism. It's, it, it's um, it's understandably not very well written. Right not because us. it's, not because it in particular is actually. It's not the book's fault or the editor's fault that the chapter on Epicureanism is poorly written. 
uh, it's because there is very little good writing on Epicureanism. Um, because there's very few people who actually take Epicureanism seriously enough, other than as an historical oddity, to write about it uh, in, a, in a serious and direct manner. So, uh, can't get more Vorcha, Garma's problems. Uh, maybe build a beacon path. That's a good idea. Following, cool. Uh, oh, Erica says I'm interested to see if the person who wrote that section still holds those views. He sounds like the uh, sounds like the guy who has a new philosophy every other month. Apparently, he has he has at least been interested in Epicureanism since 2012, and this book was published this January. Uh, so, of course, it is entirely possible that he has completely changed worldviews January, or you know when he wrote this and now. Um, I would definitely not rule that out because I think you're right. He is certainly that kind of person. Um, and I talked about this in my second class, especially, uh, that that when you encounter a problem with the surface level understanding of your own mission, you can do two things. You can go into it deeper and find the answers that the tradition itself has provided, or you can run away from it and choose something else. He certainly seems like the kind of person who will run away from a tradition and find something more suitable, more subjectively suitable, um, that he likes. Uh, rather than doing the hard work of trying to reconcile one's pre-existing position uh, with an apparent difficulty. Miskid says, almost like because it doesn't deserve to be taken seriously to begin with. Oh yeah, no, no, of course it doesn't. Again, everyone acknowledges this. Not everyone. Most people acknowledge this. There was kind of a resurgence during the Enlightenment of, of Epicureanism, but it was, New was again, even then, to taken as sort of one aspect of a greater theory kind of thing. It wasn't really taken straightforwardly seriously. It's gonna Things take a lot of... There's the, there's the goal, I think. It's, um... I'm gonna go the wrong way real quick, because I'm wondering if there's anything up here. Oh. Anyway, where's some Forger left? Almost surprised. Alright. Uh, of course, Wizkid says, because most people would rather be degenerate and self-centered, uh, but ultimately lost uh, than go through the pain of self-actualization and pursue salvation. Of course, can't I agree. Uh, it's certainly the easier path, if nothing else. Doubt. Oh. This is neat. This is the path that we followed, by the way. That's really cool. All the way around. I'd love to go into, like, fly cam mode and just kind of wander around this map because it's really complex and really... Uh, it's probably actually quite simple. Um, it's just doesn't quite... Whoa! Jesus. It just probably doesn't look very simple because of the fog. my squad mates anyway. I think I lost them in the fog somewhere. Well, see you guys in Barovia. Little D and Joe. We uh my uh my Sunday group just started playing Curse of Strahd. 
uh, which is a very, very good DNA. Uh, we kind of adapted it somewhat, and we're we're doing it in a different, somewhat different way. But um, but it involves getting lost in the mist and ending up in a strange and uh, ruled by the Strad von Zero. That that's a lot of fun. It's been, it's been good so far. It's been good so far. Very creepy. A lot of uh, a lot of horror theme. So far, um, but yeah. Let me uh, while we're while we're waiting, let me read this first. His sort of introduction to Epicureanism, which is really just sort of a self introduction to himself. Um, I began adopting the label of Epicurean in 2012 after realizing that Epicurean philosophy was the most satisfying for me. Bad start. I had been raised Catholic, rejected that faith, and studied various religions. Buddhism had intrigued me at one point, and even helped me to accept the impermanence of jobs and people I loved and lost. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness had taught me to cultivate the higher pleasures. Vegetarian food, sweet music, wholesome association, but ultimately made bizarre supernatural claims and required full submission at the feet of a guru. I don't like authority. I realized that my deeply ingrained Western values impeded me from delving deeper into these Eastern traditions. I had been reading books by the new atheists when I came across Epicurean teachings. First of all, who was still reading the new atheists in 2012? Cringe, bro. Um, and do you see what I mean? That this is probably the most insufferable human being I've ever read anything from? Probably ever. Uh, sure, we're going to be completely out of platinum, but probably worth it. Uh, heavy weapon. Uh, maybe there's more. Is that right? <laughs> Wizkit says, how? How does someone sound like such a, such a friggin' moron in so little span of time? Um, well, me doing the voice certainly contributed, but not exclusively. Basically, he was like, um, okay, this is... Basically, it's just kind of a standard new atheist type, um, but wants to adopt the label of Epicureanism because pelvic issues, as I said. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking for evidence of the pelvic issues, like, turn two pages later. Uh, two pages later or so. Um, do, do, do. Um, here we go. The Catholic faith I was, uh, I was raised in had convinced me that suffering was good, a source of virtue even, and that pleasure, particularly the types of pleasure that my body was capable of experiencing, was evil. I wonder where this is going. This is persistently reinforced via disturbing imagery of a corpse hanging on a cross, of weeping virgins, of saints who carry agony on their faces. Yeah, it seems like you've been get a little bit of a selection before. We were told they had to carry our cross while alive, and then upon death we would have bliss. After having endured one non-renewable life we were allowed, I wanted to live, on the other hand, a happy life and avoid misery. With the soul at war with one's body and instincts, it is impossible to live a happy and healthy life. I was taught to be credulous, to believe without questioning, and that no evidence was needed for my belief. Where did you learn that? Whereas the entire system of Epicurean philosophy is based on the evidence that nature presents to our faculties, despite the fact that we know pretty un when taken on their own and not but through uh, the filter of reason. Here's the kicker. What did it? I think. Upon reaching puberty, I discovered that I was gay. Who would have thought? Again, it's it's pelvic issues. It's, again, what I mean by that. Clearly, this is a matter of not carefully considering whether a particular ideology is correct or not. It's just that that ideology says that your particular desires need to be ordered differently. That you need to do something different about your life, and you don't want to do something different about your life, and so you decide that you want to select something else that that subjectively suits your desires more closely. Um, that's Wizkid says, what a total doomer-coomer. I don't know if he's a doomer. 
Boomer, though, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Whiskey says, obviously, somebody doesn't understand the glory of Corpus Christi uh, and winning by losing. Uh, seriously, it's not that pleasure is bad. It's that it has a certain time and place where it is. No, pleasure is intrinsically good. No, no right-thinking Christian will deny that pleasure is intrinsic. Uh, what a Christian will laugh while reading. Finn. Listen, it's funny. I am, okay, I, I get academically mean sometimes. We all know this, right? Uh, that I, I, I tend to think that a lot of people, not a lot of people, once in a while I will find somebody who, <clears throat> who I disagree with to a comical extent. Um, let's bring Garrus. Allie. Our best, our best, um, besties. Um, cool. Let's go. Do that thing, that, that package pickup. Um, Oh, okay. So, oh, sorry. I didn't. I missed the ending of uh, what was was saying. So, um, that there's a certain time and a place where it's appropriate and acceptable, and failing that, it can and will be disordered. Okay. 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 I've got you. Yeah. There's a difference there. Yeah. You're right. That that's that is a much better. Uh, let's get that. Uh, that's a much better description than, than what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's more or less what I was trying to say. Yeah. But you're certain the neural stimulators are compatible with both my suit and Asari physiology? Oh, no. No, buddy. Another difficult development for human expansion as the colony oh, buddy, no. has been attacked. The council has suggested that the attacks are a tragic coincidence. Talking about Coomers. Yeah, no, I, uh... Yeah. There's also a lot, of, uh, a lot of other really specific little problems and issues there uh, that are, you know, worth criticizing if we... Um, Galana LeMay, shipping routes into the Terminus systems. Don't worry, our contact is a Batarian gentleman named Anto. He's one of Arya Tullik's flunkies, but we're keeping his palms well greased, and he should for a safe passage through the systems. And as long as we stay beneath Arya's notice, it should be fine secretly. Uh-oh. Interesting. Oh, that's sweet. But I'm okay. A little dry spell isn't gonna kill me. We could watch Fleet and Flotilla. It got awards for its portrayal of the... Uh... I admire his I admire his uh anyway, get it. comes to worst, his, uh, I did have the nerve stimulation program built into my suit. And I hear that the love scenes are what? Oh yeah. Standard equipment for any responsible adult. Oh here, let me fire it up. Uh excuse me, human. Private conversation. I mean a little space, please. Oh, uh, okay. Whiskey goals? Really? Did you listen to the whole conversation? That's goals? You're talking about goals like a neural stimulator in yeah, your suit? Going for? Our report may surprise you. New data commissioned by the mm. Union. Sure about all that? All right. Let's see. Anything else I gotta pick up here? Doodly 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 do. We probably not, but let me go check the other shops. I don't wanna swing by Liara's yet. Uh, just yet. So um, um, I got some other um, other things to do before that uh, that DLC. Ah, I see, I see, I see. You didn't hear the rest of it. You gotcha. You have no idea what this means to my family. So yeah, no, uh, no neural stimulate suits. That's good. It's probably for the best. Orion Coomer. Man, it's just been, it's uh, its really been a day for it, or a few minutes for it. Sometimes you say these things, and I don't know. Maybe it's because you had a Batarian father. Wow. Rude. My father. Pure bloods are a waste of genetic potential. That's Jesus. how we get throwbacks, like the Ardat Yakshi. Hey, I don't like pure bloods either, but that's going a little far. This, I tell you, this port is a treasure trove of really awkward and okay, disturbing. Okay, listen, things. give Fax a full refund. Do you hear me? He knows. I don't know how. It doesn't matter. Credit him a full refund now, and then. What about you? 
Going to try and make it as a commando? Uh, yeah. Uh... Why not? Maybe a shirt. Or a car. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Helium. Hey, There's a model ship in this. That's funny, right? Asari's kid. It's just, we're looking for weapons. Shouldn't you be taking this seriously? Hey, I'm... Hey, we're friends. I have never called you that. No, but you're thinking about it. You think it was notice. easy growing up? All users of Coral's brand yes. medical radiation systems are asked to discontinue treatment immediately. Please return your system to an authorized dealer for a refund. Or for credit toward the exciting new Coral's brand radiation personal defense weapon. Customer safety is important, and Coral's remains committed to providing the best radiation... Wait, 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 wait. So, they... They are... There's a recall on a um, some kind of a beauty care product, and you can exchange it or credit on a new personal defense spray by the fit by the same company. I wonder if it's the same thing. <laughs> oh my god! Love Ilium. Love Ilium. Anyway, we uh, we are like done with a few of the side quests. <laughs> oh, geez, I'm gonna half an hour. We can do a few more. We can certainly do a few more things. Oh yeah, Ilium is a little a little messy. It's, they really play up the uh, the whole like the deregulated dystopian thing. Um, uh, that said, it is um, pretty legally protected in terms of tort law, which is nice. Alright, Captain's Cabin. I'll get back to the Citadel of Vin. I didn't think so. Fish. Always fish. Always fish. The other bit, and this is uh, this is also something I was talking about. I think it was in the D and D. Um, <clears throat> how the um, there was the uh, another part of of uh, of Crespo's weird uh, weird interpretation of Epicureanism that was kind of dumb, um, or to be a little bit uncharitable. Um, his uh, he had a section on economics, which is. But in my understanding, a pretty fundamental understanding of several things. Uh, one being what ancient authors, especially Greeks, meant by economics. Um, Epicurus's writing on economics was not about what we mean by economics. It's not about economic science or anything like that. Uh, what it was about was household management. That's it. Um, purely household management. It was about managing one's own estate and one's own, uh, one's own family and affairs like that. That's what economics meant. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about trade. Uh, it wasn't about, especially not about, you know, macro level type stuff. Uh, it wasn't about public policy. No, it was personal. Uh, it was what we would call like home economics or personal finance. Even finance. It wasn't exclusively finance. It was household management. Um, so no, it was not. There was no Epicurean economic system. But he puts one forward. And by one forward, I mean several forward. Um, Anomaly detected. Ooh, an anom General distress. Eef. Mega process interrupted. Translation error. Uh, Status of system operator is launching probe. Uh, General distress. Mega process interrupted. Translation error. Status of system operator is unknown. General distress. Mega oh, there. Uh, I have to do some mining off stream. Um, and then also there's this weird little grab bag of policies that he happens to like, which realistically just kind of turns into, you know, European center left democratic socialism type thing. Um, social Democrat, maybe uh, more, more like social Democrat than Democrat, say, um, but things like, um, tax on, on excess wealth, 
Okay. Um, uh, Distress Beacon, let's bring the Doctor. And Distress Beacon, let's bring Master Thief. So we need Salvage. Why not? That makes sense, right? Uh, dude. Oh, not enough for the maxed out neural. Darn. Um. Oh, it's this one. I should not have brought those two. Whatever, it's fine. <clears throat> anyway, the other thing. Uh, what I was saying, right? What's the um. Uh. What was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's got some various, just sort of a, an eclectic, weird mix of different, um, different economic theories. Like, he's got some, he's got some Keynesianism mixed in there. He's got some neoclassical, sort of Chicago school stuff mixed in. Uh, he's got some, he's even got a little bit of Austrian, um, trade theory mixed in with, um, um, mutually beneficial, necessarily mutually beneficial exchange subjective valuation, that sort of thing, but uh, then he, of course he screws it up uh, by mixing in the other stuff, which does not mix well. He <clears throat> um, yeah, it's uh, it's really rather silly that his, uh, his economic policy, right, what or what he claims to be Epicurean economics, is basically just sort of the conventional wisdom of, of people who don't think very hard about it. Uh, talking about universal basic income. Um, Whiskit says, is he not a hedonist? Why would he w not want everyone to use all the wealth they have to pursue the maximum pleasure possible? Uh, unless he's also a st uh, statist thug, which would check out. Yes, he is. Um, kind of, but he's also just kind of confused. Uh, he, he goes really heavily into the idea that beyond a certain point, wealth doesn't matter for happiness, even though he says that it, I mean, even though the study that he cites clearly says that it's not that it doesn't matter, it's that other factors become important over a certain amount. The study he points to says 75,000. Okay, maybe that's true. Uh, well, this is bad. Uh-oh, VI network's compromised. Uh-oh. Anyway, um, <clears throat> we'll see if that's, uh, that's important. Maybe that'll be important. Um... But yeah, part of part of what he has to say is that everyone should get a minimum standard universal basic income kind of crap, um, paid for by a uh, a tax on excess wealth, which again he defines carefully based on sociological research, but then also doesn't doesn't take the time to think through that that doesn't mean that wealth beyond that point is counterproductive or anything. It's just that other things take precedence at that point. Okay, fine, but that's not. That's not the point you wanted to make. Sensors just went offline and I'm locked out of helm control. The VI is reporting malfunctions all over the ship. Oh. Captain, short range sensors just went offline oh, and no, I'm locked out of helm thing. control. The VI is reporting malfunctions all over the ship. And up here. Anyway, though. Yeah, it's, um... Uh, Wizkid asks, how do these people get degrees? What the hell's wrong with the academy? Uh, well, he's not an expert on economics, and yet he wrote a chapter on it, that's all. We are on a collision course or a section, not a chapter. Fast. Report to the escape pods immediately. This is not a drill. Uh, he's not an expert on economics, and he's not quite well-read well on economics. Um, he's also, I don't know if this is his academic area of expertise. Uh, reflexive mech armor. Cool. Loki mechs? Oh, great. Amir mechs? Oh, worse. Uh, okay, this is gonna be bad. Anyway. Yeah, I don't actually know if this is his area of academic expertise. The reason I say this is because uh, part of the format of the book is looking for people who actively practice and participate in the various um, sort of uh, life philosophies that they that it talks about. Uh, rather than differing purely to academic experts about this sort of history of ideas, that kind of thing. Um, which I get that. We've got a problem in the cargo bay. Marcus says the mechs in the containers are activating and self-destructing. Go check it out. Oh, I didn't need this. 
multiple hostiles powering up at your location. Recommend immediate extraction. Sleep mode ended. Ah, oh, great. Rerouting power. Just the thing to help. Hostile forces have engaged. Oh, killed that one. Oh. Yeah, so I actually don't know what his cre what his credentials are. I haven't looked into it. So I don't actually know what his credentials are, but I would expect they're not in history or philosophy. Um, or if they are, they're certainly not in economics, right? Because again, he's not he's very clearly not an expert on the on the field. Um, so, you know, it's it, no one's a no one is an omniglot. No one knows everything about everything. <clears throat> uh, people typically know about their particular area of expertise. Not difficult. But that's about it. No, and you know, I know about philosophy, and that's the kind of thing that I can talk about. Sense about. It. Um. Pistol time. Fire time. Change weapons. Changing weapons. Yeah. Enjoy. Okay, let's go. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to malign the guy more than I already have. Um, I don't want to malign him unjustifiably. And I, I mean, I can point out to the errors in his work, but things I don't know about, like his credentials and things like that, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to presume. I, I'd like to keep some of my, I'd like to keep my academic intact, that sort of thing. Let's get out of here. Situation suggests retreat advisable. I agree. But yeah, it's, um, I would say he was a bad choice for the, uh, for the chapter on Epicureanism, but I would more say that a chapter on Epicureanism was probably a bad choice. Um... Oh, you mean it's so fun to just keep shooting mechs indefinitely? Yeah, that's true. Uh, don't worry, we'll go fight more. Um, so we're going to try, try and find where the MSV Corsica came from. Uh, I believe it's in the same cluster. I could be wrong. It's another side quest that we have to do. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, I I don't know. I If I were editing the book, and I can actually... I've spoken to Pig the YouTube before about that sort of thing. Couple of group Facebook and I've held him back a couple of things, but stoicism. Uh it's been a while. Um Commander, you received a new message at not, your not like terminal. you know personal relationship kind of professionally. Um I wonder I have to wonder if if there was a particular reason for including Epicureanism. Maybe as a foil to some other schools of thought, that sort of thing. Uh ooh, here we go. Last docking coordinates. Uh Dahari Station Strabo system equal. Let's go there. I don't know what you were talking about. That wasn't it, then. You'd be feel free to enlighten me, Whiskit. I uh, keep in mind I have a delay uh, on the stream from the chat, so I don't exactly know ex what you're reacting to at the time. So you might have to remind me uh, from time to time. Anyway, um, but yeah, I uh, it would be it's un it's understandably very very difficult to find a very good writer on, uh, on Epicureanism, especially someone who takes it philosophically seriously and is well-read on the topic and all that kind of stuff. Because, Like I said, 
most philosophers don't take it very seriously. So most of the time, if you're going to find a philosopher who's going to talk about uh, Epicureanism, they're not going to be taking it very seriously. Uh, they're going to be looking at it as an historical aside, and as historical data, uh, that sort of thing, in, in terms of the history of ideas, rather than talking about the ideas themselves, you know. Um, oh, 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 okay. Making fun of the dude for his, uh, for his crappy philosophy and dumb mistakes. Yeah, I, that I have no problem with. I have no problem with, with criticizing or even making fun of what somebody has to say. Especially if they probably should know better. Um, but I don't want to just sort of presume, um, presume that someone is unqualified to talk about something. He might be, and he might just have bad ideas, but they won't know what he's talking about. That there's, it's it's on one side and the other side of a line, sort of thing. Hmm. It's basically the Bermuda Triangle of the Terminus systems. Beautiful planet. Oh wait, there's one more. What am I missing? Did I miss something in the asteroid belt or something? Ah, there it is. It's this tiny one. It's very pretty. Uh, dwarf planet. All right, cool. Rough tide. This is very obviously a uh, Hanar system. Look at all this. All the sea. All of the seaborne. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pick up. Our fuel. Pick up some fuel. you on okay. Ah, okay so Wizgit says I suppose that's where we differ I have no problem dabbing on idiots I just prefer uh, to be a bit more polite so I know that. um I will I will be respectful of somebody to a fault it's just I'll also take their arguments seriously and if their arguments suck I will criticize them. I may, I may chuckle at them or laugh at them if they're silly enough. Uh, but the actual person arguing, I will, I'll be respectful enough. I do think that that uh, Crossbow is probably a pretty, pretty intolerably sort of dude, uh, just based on how he writes. And again, my students kind of got this as well, got the same impression. Far from alone in this, and they, they having read the whole chapter, sort of thing. Very, he's very dismissive of things. All right, we're going on to a space station. That means we're bringing town. Um, let's also bring Kasumi to uh, help infiltration kind of stuff. Why not? Story wise, it makes sense. Ooh. Uh oh. It's not good. Hmm. Dr. Galwin, my suggestion, add power to all systems, save critical lives. Hope that disabling these systems will the resources she needs she needs to kill us temporary solution we cannot last this out on Listen. didn't last this out yeah. well let's turn the power back on docking air Uh. Oh. oh, okay. Intruder detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. Our outage detected in the station. Me, is locked. 
security purposes. Of course it is. Dr. Galwant. Her belief is that the VI is paranoid about the possibility of infection. Its current homicidal behavior is likely at the desire to keep us from shutting it down. I believe that the VI is, main, is malfunctioning, that it believes our equipment is a virus. If we continue to try to shut her down, she will keep trying to destroy us. Maybe our only recourse is to just do nothing and convince her that we're threat to death. Intentional docks personnel. We're expected a ship. We're expecting a shipment of mech parts. The Hanekar facility at Capac, uh, Haskins, Titan Nebula. The I knows to accept a docking request from the freighter MSV Corsica. Looks like that's where we go next time. We'll start next. Week. Might have to start next. Week. The end of this sort of. Course. Oh, so I can't do that. Just need to restore power. Living area power restored. The living area doors have been closed to quarantine a threat to this station. Advise intruders to engage self-destruct procedures to avoid death by starvation. Did the AI? I think the VI. All right, AI just don't kill ourselves. That's cool. Two doors enabled. Five doors enabled. Go. Oh. That's supposed to be a puzzle, but I accidentally got it pretty quick. That's good. Apparently. Uh, yeah, both my squad mates are down. All attempts to decontaminate station have failed. Require more power to escalate defenses. Maintenance area power restored. Okay, they're bath. They're both back up. Okay, we're good. Alright. Nothing. It's this. Innings. I'm positive that the trouble with our VI started after the Corsica docked with us. Allison is looking at the VI itself at the time you, uh, you need to go through the law. Find out everything that was on that ship. Very nicely atmospheric. You have been identified as a hostile intruder. Don't mean to be. Oh, uh, Wizkid asks, how many more side quests are we going to do? Having a hard time keeping my eyes open. I'm probably going to wrap up after this one. Uh, it is very close to midnight, and I do have to get up. So, Research area it's going to have to be restored. hit pretty soon. Uh, Testing beam. area has been locked down according to protocol M29-2. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. It's a mirror puzzle. I love mirror puzzles. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Reflective armor prototype 
repositioned. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Testing area has been unlocked. Yo. All personnel take this opportunity to leave the station immediately. Long day. Like I said, I am going to wrap. We're probably going to wrap up in the next 10 minutes or so. So we are done with Hub this area one. Power restored. Central mainframe access granted. Docked Save vessel detected. Attempting to upload central programming into docked vessel's mainframe. Uh-oh. Intruder detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. This is a secure zone. Please leave this station immediately. I regret to inform you that all attempts to defend the station have failed. Shutting down security protocols. Well, good news is, it's like ED1, Battle of the AI slash VIs. So yeah, I think we are going to call it there. I think this is a good place to stop. We'll pick up right here where we left off next time. I'll probably do some mining and stuff off stream just so I can get some of that. Otherwise, um, otherwise, we'll, uh, like I said, I will see all of you on Thursday. Uh, if you haven't yet, definitely check out the new video on the Republic. I have a, um, because I have a new, I have a new one out, um, on the Ring of Gaiges and Glaucon's test case. These are a couple of really core arguments. Uh, you'll find the link to that one as well in the description once the stream is over. So if you do want to check it out on your own, uh, go for it, as well as the other couple of things that we've mentioned. Um, otherwise, that's about all I have for tonight. Uh, so, hopefully I will see all of you again Thursday night uh, for more Red Dead Redemption 2. We are getting very close to the end uh, of that game. We actually might finish the main story Thursday. I want to promise that. It's entirely possible that we'll have another one or two left. Um, but it is entirely possible that we'll actually finish the main story then. Uh, I do want to make sure that we get everything done that we need to get done before that main story finishes. Uh, I will feed the fish. Yes, thank you for the reminder. Um, actually, I'll do that now while I'm doing my outro thing. Um, Commander, you received a new message. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is definitely a. Um, uh, it is getting close to the end of the main story of Red Dead, but there is, like I said, quite a significant uh, that we're going to be going through. A bunch of stuff there, so it's still going to be a few more weeks. So, okay, here uh, it's going to let us know where the okay, cool coordinates down to the, the galaxy. That is a perfect place to pick up this time. Anyway. That's all I've got for tonight. So, uh, yes, WizKid, I it's a lot of post-game stuff. That's some of my favorite parts of the game. Really like the atmosphere of it. So, we'll, uh, we will, there's a good chance, like I said, we'll finish up the main story, Red Dead, on Thursday. And uh, after that, we were, we we're going to be continuing through here on uh, Mass Effect 2. Uh, next Monday, we'll do some more side quests and then possibly another major story mission, depending on how many of these we get done. Or we might just do one or two side quests, main story mission, or side quests, main story mission. We might flip-flop back and forth. I'm open to suggestions on that. Feel free to let me know between now and then. Uh, you have until I construct a thumbnail for the next. Anyway, with that, uh, I'm going to wish you all a very good night. Get some sleep. See you all next time. Bye.